Hey everyone, you might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime branding on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And well, Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So, if you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. <laughs> Um, I'm going to kind of wrap this podcast up on this final topic um, because you guys had to know. I've been avoiding it outside of talking about NBA 2K, talking about third parties in general on Switch um, just because there was all these new announcements between Doom and Wolfenstein, the new Colossus, uh, two Bethesda games, huge games. Doom was just a bunch of people got to play at a press event. We just had a bunch of video footage come out last week. Looks pretty good. On Switch, runs at 30 FPS. I know, I know, 30 FPS, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Bottom line is everyone who said they played it, there were people who couldn't even tell if it was 30 half the time because that's how smooth it ran. Right. So, um, all right, so so that's great. But what's interesting is Bethesda did an interview at the event, and they were asked about why they're supporting Nintendo because Bethesda has basically never supported Nintendo, mm-hmm. and Bethesda's a massive Western publisher. Right. I mean, you love some of their games. Yeah. So it, it's... It's just huge to have them on board. And and that's just that. They're also getting support from Rockstar. L.A. Noir is coming out. Yeah. Uh, the Rockstar game. Yeah. Granted, uh, where's my Grand Theft Auto V? I'm not even a Grand Theft Auto V fan, but it's still like the one of the best-selling games of all time. Right. And you've made it for 360 and PlayStation 3. You can run on Switch. Come on. <laughs> We're going to let you finish, but it's one of the best-selling games of all time. <laughs> all time. But, yeah, it's uh, it's such a interesting thing that Bethesda put it. Bethesda basically said, uh, they didn't really talk about why they haven't supported Nintendo in the past. They admitted they haven't, but they didn't, you know, maybe they want a bad talk to Nintendo because maybe their reasons are the Switch, the, the, the Wii U sucked and the Wii sucked, so we're not going to support them. Right. I mean, that the might Wii, literally be well, what they the think. Well, the Wii and the Wii U might not have fit with their games. Yeah, well, like that, 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 no, that's the proper response. But yes. internally he's probably thinking, like, you don't want angry with those platforms? Yeah. <laughs> um, but what, what, he, what he went on to say is, uh, one, they Bethesda apparently thinks these games are going to sell very well. Mm-hmm. And they said they approached these games um, as if, this is an interesting mark, as if a majority of people playing on Switch have never played them. Okay. Very interesting approach. Yeah, that is, that is definitely interesting. Um, because, obviously, the game like Skyrim, never being on a Nintendo platform, making an assumption that most people that own a Switch, because I'm not one of those people, um, don't experience gaming outside of Nintendo platforms. And I don't think mm-hmm. that's true with Switch. Uh, right. I think Switch right. has brought back people who haven't been on Nintendo platforms in a while. Right. And have been on other platforms. Right. So I actually think it's the opposite of that. But it's interesting, um, their perspective, that they think the games are going to sell well because uh, there's just no competition for these games on there and no one's ever played a game like this on those platforms. So to them, it's like this whole brand new game. That's right. really high quality and really yeah. awesome. Like Skyrim, you know, I think Skyrim actually makes a lot of sense just because it's following up Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Breath of the Wild really set the table that a lot of people that own Switches love games like that. Skyrim fits in that kind of right. open world right. adventure yeah. realm. Although it's a full RPG and it's different, it's still something that a lot of you know, Breath of the Wild fans are probably going to want to check out if they haven't played it before. Mm-hmm. But And even if you have played it before, there's plenty of people I know that have played it before, but they're going to get it just so when they're on the go. They can play Skyrim on the go. Yep. Um, and it's just interesting seeing that Bethesda thinks that, I mean, I, I don't want to say it's an insult to think, because there's obviously, there, there's those of you out there that you just game on Nintendo platforms. Right. You, don't, you might be aware these games exist because right, other people right. talk about them or you yeah. see commercials, but you don't care because they're not on your platform. Right. And maybe when they do come out, you don't care about Doom, you don't care about Skyrim, you, don't, you, you just care about Nintendo games. Right. Or like Mario plus Travis Kingdom Battles or like Fire Emblem Warriors and crossover games. Yep. You just care about games that have Nintendo IP in it. And, that, and that's totally, there's nothing wrong if that's what you exactly. enjoy. You enjoy what you enjoy. Right, exactly. I'm someone that does enjoy third-party games. Mm-hmm. We just talked at length earlier about NBA 2K18. Like, I enjoy third-party games. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I enjoy oh. Doom. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy 
We, Halo. How much Halo have you played? Oh, God. Granted, that was, you know. That was back in the day, but oh, yeah. my Lord. We played the crap yeah, out of that it, game. It's, it, it's one of those things with me, at least, that I get where they're coming from, but what's interesting to me is how confident they seem to be. Mm-hmm. It's that Bethesda's like, look, uh, they, they, these games we think are going to sell well, and, and they kind of threw in the, by the way, it's not like we're just doing these games. We, we have more. Yeah, right. And, like, it was inference that it's not just, like, this is it. They have more games coming to Switch. Yeah. Basically what they're, saying. Yeah. they're basically saying that we're supporting Switch moving forward. Right, it's essentially right. what they said before. Because there, there's been all, and I think this might have been a response to some people with, the, like, a critical of EA, like I am, where they're not really putting their best foot forward with the Switch, and they're just giving us FIFA 18. They're ignoring all their other games, and they're not willing to put Frostbite fully on the system. Although right. Bethesda's just like, Look, like we're giving you some of our most recent new generation games. Plus, we're giving you a game that's never come out, and we ain't done. Right, exactly. That's we, we, huge. We, we, we ain't done. Oh, oh, you you want Fallout New Vegas? We'll probably make that happen. You want, uh, you, you want uh, whatever, whatever new Bethesda games coming out. Right. Next year, like it, it basically sounds like every Bethesda game from this point moving forward is going to come out. It's coming on Switch. Right. Basically, what it sounds like. Yeah. And. I know that some people, there was one comment saying, though, do, well, do we even want these games if they're going to run at less than HD resolution? Because, like, uh, Doom on handheld drops down to, like, 540p um, and less than 60 FPS. I'm like, you don't have to have it, but everyone, you, what you desire right. doesn't necessarily mean another person. There are people that they don't care. Right. They don't right. care about 60 as FPS. Long as it's- they don't care that, oh, no, on a small 6-inch screen, it's not 720p. I, you know right. what? I actually, for people like that, I would like to take five, 540p gameplay of one game, 720p gameplay of a completely different game. Because obviously mm-hmm. it's the same game, you're going to tell the difference. Right. A completely different game, you tell me which one's 720p and which one's not. Right. Without me telling you. Right. Because I actually question on that tiny screen if you'll be able to tell the difference. Right. Because and, and 540p me, and 720p are closer together than 720p and 1080 is. And to me, even 30 FPS versus 60 FPS, to me doesn't matter. As long as it sticks, Smooth. as long as it sticks within Consistent. one to two frame rates, if you start dropping five frame rates, it doesn't matter if it's running that at sucks. sixty. That sucks. Then you're even, even at sixty. That sucks. Yeah, you, you, yeah. it doesn't matter. You you can you notice it's uh, jarring. It's something that kicks you out of the experience. Right. It reminds you you're playing a game. I mean, you know you're playing a game, but like you could be totally immersed in it. All of a sudden, that right. shutter happens. You're like, yep. Yep. Oh, no, that's right. just it. If if I'm at thirty FPS. 29, 28, 30, 30, 30, 30. The only game game I accepted on is World of Warcraft. No. Um, Oh, yeah. I play it at 4K ultra settings. I used to play at like 2 FPS, raiding and 40 mans. Yeah. Um, And somehow was like one of the best healers on the whole server because I had to anticipate things like minutes ahead of time because of how long it would take for my commands to get through. <laughs> the game itself is running at, yeah. you know, the highest frame possible, but I'm not kick, I'm not yeah, registering right, right. that stuff. Yeah. So, like, don't get hit by the fire. So I'd have to be like, okay, i got to memorize guy. Okay, I think the fire's going to come here, so I better move here. I think yeah. coming here, I better move here. I'm in Molten yep. Core. What am I going to do? Is the boss on me? I have no idea because healers back then drew a lot of aggro. I better just hit my fade button just in case. <laughs> oh, so I got so used to playing at such a low frame rate that now I'm like, whatever. I put I have a, I have a GTX 1070, so I push it to Ultra. I, I push um, every setting as max as I can, 4K. Everything's maxed out, and the game runs at like 22 FPS. And to me, it's like a dream. But again, as long as it's consistent, it's not consistent. FPS, it's not. It's well, no, it's, FPS is not consistent. Wow. Right. But usually, if you but, can keep it over 60 in a game like WoW, you're not going to notice the drops. Uh, when it just below 60 is when you do. And I can. Like, literally, I could drop, like, two settings, and I would be at, like, 100 FPS. Yeah. Because, like, they got some crazy uh, anti-aliasing settings and stuff that I just have maxed out that I have no business maxing out. But I'm just yeah. like, whatever, I can. <laughs> I can. That's the thing. Right, if I did right, that on my right. old computer, it would just crash. Right. So, like, I can, so I'm going to. But and 22 FPS, granted, I'm sure in a raid setting, I'd probably drop yeah. it down. I don't know. But it, it's just interesting to me that really what matters to me, at least on consoles, because PC, mm-hmm. that's the thing. I choose to deal with that. Right. I could. I can make it way better if I want. Right. Right. Um, Consoles, we can't. And that's just because I'm so used to playing that game at even worse, less right. than five frames. Right. Um, that twenty-two feels smooth to me because yeah. what I'm right. used to. Um, but in a console space, all that matters to me is whatever the target frame rate is. It either stays there and it's locked. Yep. Or as you said, I can handle a two-frame drop. Mm-hmm. That doesn't really bother me too much. But a five frame drop, and it also depends on how long that two frame drop. Yeah, lasts. if it's just a single frame, that's not yeah. a big deal. Yeah, 
or you know, if it's during a cutscene, if it's during a cutscene, it doesn't really bother me too much. I, right. I can't control the game, but during gameplay, right? Uh, I shouldn't say that because NBA 2K18, that's excessive. Okay, oh, you can't drop right. that. Right. That's but not yeah, a five that's frame the, drop. That's, the, that's like a, that's like a twenty five frame drop. Yes. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, it, it's definitely something that. Um, as long as the frame rates are mostly consistent or mostly at the target, mm-hmm. I'm fine. Right. But, I mean, I'm not going to sit there and, and say, you know, I wouldn't prefer 60, of course. Um, even for yeah. people out there that be like, I can't tell the difference. Just trust me. You you think you can't tell the difference, but your controls are more accurate. Uh, you might find, like in Doom, one of the big appealing aspects was that it was 60 FPS. But it's okay. I, I think... You know, the person who, who said that they weren't okay with this says, I need to stop making excuses. Uh, like, you know, the Switch's power isn't an excuse. I'm like, it is an excuse. Mm-hmm. The game, we're talking about a game that was built for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC last year, mm-hmm. running on Switch. I'm sorry, Switch is not even close to as powerful as any of those platforms. Right. So, yeah, if we're going to have that game, it's not going to run as well. Right. Right. And... It, we just shouldn't get it because people don't. Yeah. Right. No. Because you are not okay with it. I. Yeah. I don't know. It's not like it's not like you can say they're lazy. This is this is a new generation game running on shitty hardware. Shittier. Hardware. Shittier hardware. hardware. Yeah. It's not shitty hardware. It's just shittier. It's actually really good for mobile hardware. But right. It's, exactly. Okay. It's like it's basically like running Doom 2016 on a phone. Yeah. Uh, come on. Yeah. Pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they can, that's why I made that video about third parties don't have an excuse anymore. And you have Bethesda here, like, they're not, those, and it sounds like they said Nintendo came to them. Nintendo said, what do we need to do? Right. What, what, you know, like, Nint- the, Nintendo coming to a, a third party studio they've never had on board and being like, let's make it happen. Well, what, what, what do you, what do you guys think about our platform? Here's all the I mean, information we have on it. Here's all the dev tools. And then, like, it's not just like a lot of third party platforms might come to the Nintendo and be like, hey, we want to release a game on Switch. Can we get a dev unit? Can we get it? Right. Nintendo's like, no, we, well, we came down to your office. They'd almost be and dumb not to to see how bad Nintendo hasn't done that. Right. That's what I thought right. was interesting about it, is Nintendo has kind of avoided, outside of EA and Ubisoft, they really don't talk to Western studios. Right. And here they are flying from Japan. I mean, not even just Reggie. They had their guys from Japan come to their office and be like, yeah. this is the Switch, man. What do you guys think you can do on this thing? Mm-hmm. And they're like, I don't think we can run all our games on this thing. Yeah. I mean, it, just, just to see the size of market that Bethesda has, and it, for Nintendo did not even approach and that. Rockstar, I wonder if they did the same thing yeah. for Rockstar. Right, right, right. When we were just for waiting, them, like L.A. Noir is just that tip. There's actually more coming. We don't for know for them to not even approach that, with, especially with a brand new system going in a completely new way, different direction mm-hmm. from anything they've ever done before. For them to not approach Bethesda, Rockstar, you know, the, the major third parties... It's kind of dumb. In the would past, be kind of stuff. Would be kind of dumb. Well, and even now, Square Enix, okay? The Japanese company, Nintendo's mm-hmm. a lot closer. Had, used yeah. to have a fantastic relationship with them way back in the day. Yep. Then PlayStation happened. Right. Um, so, Square Enix obviously has Project Octopath Travelers exclusively yep. coming to Switch. Uh, they have, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3 in the works, which a lot of people are excited about. Uh, which they should be, especially if you're one that love... Uh, visuals, um, they because they have a Toy Story world in there that almost looks better than the original Toy Story movie, and people have been wow. wait, waiting in video games for video game visuals to catch up to what Toy Story did back in 1998. Right. And for, it took forever, 20 yeah. years. Yeah, right. But we're there. Yeah. Which is really cool. Um, just just a really cool thing to think about because just how good the visuals, like how good Pixar is oh, yeah, when yeah, they're at sure. their best. Oh, oh. yeah. But... To, to have that happen with Kingdom Hearts three and it's being made in Unreal Engine four, they they released Final Fantasy fifteen last year, I believe it was last year, mm-hmm. um, and it runs on this engine called Luminous, and Luminous sucks. Luminous mm-hmm. is why this thing sat in development for like eight years, mm-hmm. because it was an engine built originally for three sixteen and PlayStation three, and then got reworked for Xbox One and PlayStation four and PC, and it was just a pain in the butt. Like there's there's so many interviews out there talking about how hard development was, and they, well they don't call out the engine specifically. It's basically all been referred to. It's it's the engine, mm-hmm. um, but that was our engine, and we didn't have a choice. Blah blah blah. blah. Well, they want to bring the game to Switch. Luminous Engine obviously does not run very well on Switch. It doesn't even run very well on Xbox One and PlayStation 4, for being honest. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy 15 does not have very good performance on those systems. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It's not, it doesn't even have good performance on PC. The engine's just a piece of junk. <laughs> but they try. They, they threw it at Switch just to see what happened. Results weren't good. They didn't do any optimizations. We talked about this briefly before. But now we have more information where they're saying, you want to know how serious we are about getting the full console version of, of it on, on Switch? We're going to talk with Nintendo and we're, we're going to talk with Epic about converting the entire game into Unreal Engine 4. That's crazy. Because the Switch fully supports Unreal Engine 4. That's crazy. And... Square seemingly is now exclusively using Unreal Engine 4. Kingdom Hearts 3 is using it. Project, Project Octopath Travelers. I wouldn't be surprised if they make just everything in Unreal Engine 4. Like Project Octopath Travelers could probably be done in Unity. They don't need to use yeah. Unreal Engine 4. Yeah. But why not? that's their engine of choice. If you can, if you can use that's it, their engine, why not? That's their engine of choice. And Switch runs it so well, it doesn't matter anymore. Right, exactly. all the platforms they want to put the game on are going to run well. And right now it's exclusive to Switch. Switch uses it well. Uh, so they have experience making a game in Unreal Engine 4 already for Switch. And what's exciting about this, for people who might know, oh, it's Final Fantasy 15, who knows? You know, what did I say is in Unreal Engine 4 at Square Enix? Yeah, I don't remember. Kingdom Hearts 3? Yes. Kingdom Hearts game had been on Nintendo before. They had it on the DS. Yeah. So uh, if they can get 3 with Unreal Engine 4 on Switch, like if Square Enix is really that dedicated to getting games on Switch... The games that are already running Unreal Engine 4 are perfect candidates. Yeah. So, like, it's crazy to think that Square Enix is willing to take their big big flagship game that represents their whole company in Final Fantasy and possibly rework it into an entirely new engine, which is not going to be cheap to do. Mm-hmm. And that's probably why they're talking to the Nintendo, trying to see, hey, will you publish this and pay for a little bit of that, you know, or get some of your developers involved or whatever. Right. Um, because they're obviously, they know it's going to be expensive. That's why they're unable to confirm right now, because they're probably still working on some deals behind the scenes to try to get some funding to, to make it happen. Because I'm sure Nintendo's like, yeah, of course we want Final Fantasy on our system. Yeah, right. If they're going yeah. after Doom and going after Ellie and Water, they're going after Final Fantasy. Oh, yeah, they they want sure, it on their sure. system. Um, you know, if there's anything Nintendo loves more than Western third-party support, it's Eastern third-party support. Right. <laughs> they, they would love to have Square Enix back in the fold completely. And, you know, maybe Nintendo, at least I could look at it as, if they do fund it, that's a sign of good faith. They might be like, look, we will fund the the uh, team that's going to do the conversion will fund it and we'll pay for it mm-hmm. and publish it. As long as you bring... But you got to bring Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. They got to put that stipulation like any any games you have running on Unreal Engine 4 already, you need to at least try to bring them to Switch. Yeah. yeah. Without us having to pay for it. Right. Because if the whole big thing is you think it runs better in Unreal Engine 4, this game is visually impressive. Okay, well, your other games are visually impressive already run Unreal Engine. Can you mm-hmm. try at least? Right. Try, tell us what the results are. Right. You know, how right. bad, does, how, how much do you need to knock down resolution or whatever else to make it work? Yep. Um, what what I find is interesting in all this is just, one, how desperate Square seems to be to want to get this game on there. Yep. Now, granted, the game didn't sell that well on other platforms. Maybe because of the performance issues, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't played it much. So, it, it didn't sell that well, so they might think because Nintendo has a, well, you know, they haven't had Final Fantasy in forever. Right. right. Maybe they'll just appreciate just having it. Right. Uh, and it's on the go, which might be another mm-hmm. appeal factor for it, because it's a game that takes hundreds and hundreds of hours. Um, plus, you know, Breath of the Wild. Again, another game RPG adventure kind of game. Forever. takes hundreds of hours. Okay, seems like a good platform for it because of Breath of the Wild. Again, Breath of the Wild setting the stage for these kind of yeah. games. And I think that's actually what's interesting about Breath of the Wild launching the system was that I think it almost encouraged third parties because... Nintendo, Zelda games have never been this big, wide, open world thing outside of like Zelda 1 and Zelda 2. Yeah. So they come back to it and they see, oh, it's selling. Everyone wants it. Why are we not making these? Right, Nintendo exactly. fans yeah, want yeah. these games, so why are we yeah. not giving it to them? Yeah, um, for sure. It's just crazy to me seeing, one, how confident Bethesda is their games are going to sell. And not just so confident they think it's going to sell. They're not waiting to see if they sell before they commit more games. Yeah. Like EA feels like they're waiting. Mm-hmm. They're doing the Wii U thing. If FIFA doesn't sell, we're not doing it anymore. Because FIFA Which, didn't yeah. sell on Wii U, yeah. so they stopped making it. Madden yeah. didn't sell on Wii U, so they stopped making it. Well, Again. you have... And, and you could argue 2K is doing the same thing, because they did NBA 2K on Wii U, didn't sell, so now they're not doing it anymore. And if this one doesn't sell, they might not do it anymore. But, again... you got to give games that are actually... Not buggy. Yeah, and I know. The but, actual full games. But again, those are obviously sports titles, and a lot of our audience isn't going to care about the sports title arena. But if they can get everything but the sports title, that's still a win. If they yeah. get all the Bethesda games, and they start getting all the Rockstar games, which it's funny because Rockstar is actually part of 2K. Yeah. But whatever. Technically, yeah. Rocks, Rockstar could pretty much do anything they want. Yeah. Let's just be honest. Yeah. 2K does not run Rockstar. Yeah, right. I mean, they own Rockstar. They publish everything. But 
Yeah. If Rockstar wants to make Red Dead Redemption 2, they get to make Red Dead Redemption 2. They want to make right. GTA 6. Um, Rockstar gets, writes their own paychecks. That's Right. When, when you make a game like GTA 5 that's selling like 100 million units, you get to do whatever the heck you want to yep. do. So. Yep. Oh, we need a $500 million budget. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay, you've only made us billions. Yeah, right. Okay. Here you go. Whatever you want, you can do. That's what's so cool. I thought they could take six years with their games mm -hmm. because who cares? They, they, they make so much money off them. They're one of the few AAA studios that actually bucks the trend of, I always say, like, AAA studios spend too much money on, on games. Yeah. They need to cut back the budgets and yeah. more, uh, focus on a more core experience, make things smaller. Like, like Madden, all oh, your expanding, all stuff. Like, just break it down to the essentials. Get all that right. Cut back right. the budget. Do it right and then add on to it once you have it right. Right. Um, but Rockstar is the exception. Rockstar is the, we already make billions. Well, we... We should be able to do what we want, as long as it doesn't go over what we've previously made. Right. And so, if they're the ones that you want to spend $500 million on GTA 6, you go right ahead. Yeah, right. You do not yeah. tell them. Yeah, right, right. You can tell for them sure, no for, for sure. a billion, I guess. That would be uh, crazy. Yeah, right. Although but, the hey. game's probably made them over a billion dollars. Yeah, right. But, um, I mean, you just think about it. If they sell, like, 100 million units, what do they got to get to get to a billion on that? Make Well, they're selling, what, $60 at... And let's say they make $25 profit off it. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy numbers. I can't even do that math in my head. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it might, might yeah. not be a billion. It might be 2.5 billion. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. It should be easy, 100 times 20. Yeah. Times. Yeah. Right, right, right. Depends on how many millions of copies they sell. Yeah. But the reality is, well, it should be. Because if it's 100 million copies and you sold 10 million, that's a billion. Yes. So. Yes. Or $10. That yes. would be a billion. So. Yes. And they, ha they haven't actually sold 100 million. I know it's like 80 million. I'm just saying, listen on Switch. No. Possibly could get GTA there. 5, like a full console version on the go. You tell me people don't want that, right? Tell me people don't want to take it to school where they shouldn't have it. Um, I mean, Oops. college, I guess, is fine. Yeah, we tell me like some five year old doesn't want to take their copy of GTA 5 to their elementary school and get it confiscated, <laughs> showing, showing, sitting kids. in the middle of class, die, die, die. Oh, god, <laughs> or mm, excuse my language here, goddamn whore, get out of the car. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I only say get out of the car. Yeah, there's other things you can do in GTA. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it's it's just interesting to me to see this kind of dedication, especially from Western. Um, I feel like Square is almost scrambling because mm. because Square has lost a lot of of tread in Japan. Um, it's got to hurt for them to not be relevant in their own country. Right. Nintendo has maintained the relevance because of 3DS. Right. Oh, we didn't sell very well, or we you didn't sell. It doesn't matter. 3DS is still doing fine. Um, so Nintendo never lost relevance in Japan, but Square Enix kind of has, and now they view that Switch is blowing up in Japan too. Well, we make games that don't appeal to Japanese audiences, but if it's on Switch, maybe they'll buy it. Right. Because we make console games, and Japanese only care about portable. But yeah. again, Japanese also bought more copies of Breath of the Wild than they bought of Zelda in a long time too. So yeah. again, yeah, yeah, yep, you know, yep. they might look, hey, we could, if we can move 300,000 units of Final Fantasy 15 in Japan, because nobody in Japan bought the game. <laughs> um. It's yeah, just yeah. an interesting yeah. dynamic seeing these third parties. This is, it's almost like, I almost feel like I'm living in a dream. This is what I've been waiting for. Yeah, right. I've been waiting for a major third party studio to just jump in bed with Nintendo and be like, we don't give a crap. Yep. We see the potential. We agree with you. And we're not just going to screw around. We're not. We're going to give you our best. We're not dipping our toe in and, and giving you we're not like, games. Like, we're not like 2K you... might be testing with them. We don't know. I hope we get 2K19. I hope we see a lot of improvements over this year. But we don't know yet. Right. Um, we don't know what EA is going to do. All we know is that EA has a crap load of games for us to only get one. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, we're getting an exclusive game from Square Enix. Plus, they're trying to get their flagship game over. Right. We're getting uh, last year's best game out of Bethesda. Plus, they're giving us the new Colossus that hasn't even come out yet. Yeah. Like, that's not dipping your toe in. You're Ooh, fully invested. Yeah. It almost that's cannonball. Like, like, that's, yeah. Uh, you, now, now you're even seeing Rockstar being like, look, you know, Rockstar takes forever to make new games. You know, we got Red Dead Redemption 2 coming. People presume it's not going to be on Switch. Don't know. Are they dipping their toe in with LNOR? Or is LNOR because it's coming out at the, at the same time on as other systems? So it's not like they're releasing, like, Doom is already out on the other platforms. So it's yeah. a late port. This isn't a late port. LA Noir is being remastered currently for all the platforms. Yeah. So they're getting it at the same time. So that feels less like a dip in the water. Right. That feels more like, no, we're releasing this game. This is our, our new game this holiday. We're releasing all platforms, including Switch. And then when Red Dead Redemption 2 comes out maybe next year, huh, I'm going to hit Switch 2. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. 
And I mean, think about the the games Nintendo's even sitting out from through. Like Bayonetta two, you can't tell me that Nintendo at some point stopped bringing that over to Switch. Yeah, they own the rights to it. Why wouldn't they? Right. And I don't know. And it sold decently well on Wii U. On Wii U. Yeah. Come on, it's coming to Switch. Maybe they'll bring it to Switch after they get Bayonetta three announced. Come on, yeah. Nintendo. Go to Platinum because they wanted to make a Bayonetta three. Go to them and be like, fine, well, fun. You know what? We have an even more popular platform. How are we get all these third party games? Actually, perfect time to kind of bring over a Bayonetta game, if I'm yeah. being honest. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like I don't know what happened during the Wii U era, but for some reason, third parties give a crap suddenly six months later. And, I, <laughs> and it can't just be, oh, it's selling. The Wii was selling too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Granted, it was, a, I, it was a drastically different control scheme, and I right. understand. Not right. as powerful. This isn't as powerful. It's, Games it's, are sometimes running at sub HD on, on, on Switch 2 now, but. The, I think it's all based on potential it, it is everybody can see the potential that this I think has everyone and sees it's realizing that this is meaning potential well, what's the potential to you well i mean what's the appeal to third parties the appeal to third parties is that this thing is an on-the-go and a home console you can play this virtually anywhere you want i think the appeal so it's it's you have our major games and you can play them anywhere you want sure that is the biggest appeal to anybody. I, I think it is a huge appeal just to have... Um, forget the TV aspect, because I don't think the third-party companies think they're selling their their games to people who care about playing yeah. on a TV. Let's because look, they, they have consoles that already do that. Right. I feel like it's more so that, that on-the-go aspect. Right. I think they don't... I think this is what's interesting. Because overall, a lot of people talk about, oh, Switch and Xbox One and PlayStation 4 and who's right. winning... Blah, blah, blah. I don't think Switch competes with Xbox One. I think it's right, in its right. own market entirely. It, to me... I, I, it competes more with the 3DS, I think, than it competes right, with the Exactly, and that's what I was just going to say. To me, actually, I'm th- wondering if... Nintendo's the only one that considers this basically a home console. Probably. Where, where all these gaming... I don't gaming, know anyone else calls it one besides... Where all these gaming companies are like, no, this is a portable... This is a portable machine. It's a portable that you can dock on your TV. Yes, this is a portable... This is a portable gaming console. This is not the, even the, a this home is, console. This is... This is an extremely powerful handheld that has the ability to play console level games. Right. Yeah. And, and I think Nintendo is the only think, one that's calling third, it a think, home console. And I think what's happening, especially now that it's selling, third parties are like, okay, it clicks. Yeah. It clicks. People get it. They want third party games. Right. On the go. Anyways. Yeah, it's it's just a very interesting thing to see third parties just dedicated. So I think it's just because the whole idea appeals to them. I think the idea for them to want to play their games on the go, they're like, wait a second, if right, I yeah. want to do that, yeah. well, of course consumers want to do that. What, yeah, what? Right, right, exactly. Oh, it's a dumb dog. They're not going to notice on a six-inch screen. They don't give a crap. Yeah, right. They just want to play, they just want to rip hearts out of demons in Doom. Right, they exactly. Just, you know, have blood fly everywhere, and they just want to uh, kill dragons in Skyrim, yeah. and, you know, yeah, right, solve exactly. crimes yeah. in L.A. Noir. Like, they just want to do these things and do it anywhere they want. And right. I, I think they almost see it, like, this is like the convenience that... The almost the smart device revolution was in two thousand seven. Right. Yep. Oh, touch screens. Wait. Everything in what? one. You don't have to have a separate iPhone and an iPod and a camera and, and a, a camera. This, and a you that. can put it all into one. And this is like you don't have to. You don't have to have a separate device when you play on your TV and on the go. It could just be one thing. Yeah. Right. Because console yeah. gaming's always been like, oh, console gaming's are gonna go away because of streaming and because of this and that. And yet traditional home consoles have still found a way. And this is like, yeah, but this is like the next step. Right. This is like where console gaming has to go. Right. I feel like that's what they see. We're not going to stop making PlayStation 4 games. It's huge. We're not going to stop making Xbox One or PC. But Nintendo's doing something that no one else is doing, and it's something that just it clicks. It, it just switch. Like It, it just it makes works. sense. It works, yep. It, it, like the, the automatic desire for this, it doesn't seem so far-fetched. Like on Wii, you could be like, oh, do people really want to have motion controls in, I mean, in it, my game? It's, do people really want this? Do people really want to play it on a lower resolution? Or people, to, But they're like... but. It's different because it's a handheld, so it's judged differently. Right. It's like we said before about a fan complaining about 540p. It's like, how many people are even going to notice that? Right. And it's on handheld. It, oh, yeah, it, that's what handheld. Are you, how many people are going to even notice? Right. If you blow it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because no, it's, it's on such it's, a small screen. Right, exactly. When the pixels are that condensed, anyways, right. it, everything looks better as is. Right. Right. Like, that's the way it is on our phones. Everything that you watch on your phone, like 4K, OLED, all this stuff, you watch it on your phone, it looks way better than it's going to look to you on a giant big screen. Right. Because everything is 
extra condensed down. Mm -hmm. So you could watch a 720p video versus a 1080p versus a 4K, and on your phone, you might not notice the difference. Right. Because the quality is always going to look pristine. Right. Whereas on a TV, you will notice the difference. Obviously, it's a bigger screen. Right. Bigger screens are the ones that need that bigger pixel density. Right. So I think that's why even the 720p screen, it's fine. Right. Oh, for sure. And if it's like, oh, it doesn't hit 720p, it doesn't matter. You're not going to notice. Right. You're not going to notice. Well, Matt, I mean, maybe you'll notice if there's just a lot of jaggies. Like, they didn't put any anti aliasing in. Right. That could make it a but little more not, noticeable. But that's not but the... I know, here's the thing. I noticed that more at 720p. Yeah. But that's I also I didn't even know what jaggies were until 720p. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just, like, everything just, like, blurry. Right. And then you got 720p, you're like, what the heck? Okay, Mario, you're smiling, but then I see edges on your beard. What is, what's this pixel thing going on? What is happening? Right. Thanks, HD. Yeah, yeah right? fix that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah anyways that's gonna do it for this week's episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast uh, this has been an interesting ride <laughs> it's been an interesting ride that's what happens when you don't really know what you're gonna we had one topic in mind that was the Reggie yeah. topic uh, everything else is just kind of fly by our seat of our pants and a couple of uh, interruptions that we had that's yeah, okay you guys that, uh, I hope you guys you, won't notice yeah but. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast this week uh, I'll try to have some guests on next week I've been talking to some some bigger YouTubers I guess they're not really super big but they're big Nintendo fans I'm um, hoping to get them on some future episodes. Uh, and, yeah, go ahead and support us over at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Again, we're trying to hit that $100 goal. We hit that goal, hit our first ever Patreon goal. It's going to be like a celebration here. Yeah. I might even somehow, some way, have an all-in-person podcast special when that happens. Don't know what's going to happen. I'll, I'll probably try to get Zion back up, yeah. over here. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll try to get a hold of C&D. See if he wants to travel up here. He lives in Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, or whatever. Just try to get a hold of some people and try to get this all in person thing for a special for hitting our mark because I love this podcast. I want it to be the focal point. I want everything in our channel built around it instead of the podcast just being here's our podcast and then we just talk about news well, and blah, blah, blah. It would also help if we did it every week. But, but I, I yeah. can't. I, right. I, I just, no, no, I I just can't. It, right. It's just not possible right now. Right. But $100 a month makes it more possible because time is money. Yeah. It sucks. Sure. I wish time wasn't money. Oh, yeah. No, I know. I, I wish that I could just do this. I wish I could do a daily podcast. Yeah. I, I would have to be like Kind of Funny Games. They have a daily live stream show. Kind of Funny uh, kind of funny Games Daily or whatever. Yeah. And literally, it's like a half hour show or an hour show live talking about news and just BSing about video games every day. I would love to do that. But you know what? They get paid. Right. That's why they can do it. So we'll get there someday, folks. <laughs> thanks for Thanks for watching. Right. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at, at Ninty Prime or Facebook, facebook.com slash Nintendo Prime. Uh, obviously, the best way to follow us is on Patreon. I already talked about that. Otherwise, subscribe right here on YouTube, and we'll catch you next week or two weeks from now. Whatever. Whenever. Whenever. Next one. Whenever. <laughs> A couple weeks from now. Have a good one, folks. Yep.